Hey, welcome back. My name's Justin. So after a really, really long wait, I'm finally reviewing the Lemon T950 from their Thor series, a drum set from Alibaba that people can't stop talking about. I wanted to see if it was actually any good. Big shout out to the anonymous subscriber who is allowing me to borrow this drum set so I can make this video because, you know, Lemon did not send me this drum set. It is somebody who watches 65 drums. So big thank you to that person. Now, the reason why so many people have asked me to make a video on this is because the kit is dirt cheap, at least compared to the North American electronic drum market. This custom configuration cost $584. Taxes and import duties were another $104, and shipping was $220. That's 45 days by boat. It took ages to get here. And air freight exists, but it would cost you, I think, two and a half times more in order to ship this via plane. So anyway, $908, that is a really low price for a drum set this large. And it kind of seems too good to be true. Turns out, it kind of is. A lot of corners were cut, and we definitely have a wish.com situation on our hands. But it's not a black and white situation because parts of the drum set are fantastic and worth buying separately to expand a drum set you already have. Today's video is brought to you by eDrum Center. If you're shopping for electronic drums or electronic drum accessories, check out the discount link to eDrum Center in the description below. All right, so let's start off with the size of the drums and the cymbals. On this exact configuration, he's got two 13 inch crash cymbals, a 12 inch set of hi-hats, an 18 inch ride, a 15 inch china, and a nine inch splash cymbal. All of these components here are two zone and chokeable, even the hi-hats, except for the ride, which is a three zone ride, as you'd expect. Moving over to the drums, you get a 13 inch snare, 10 inch high tom, 13 inch floor tom, and then you get a 20 inch kick drum. The snare and the two toms are both dual zone. Although for the longest time, I thought the floor tom didn't have a rim zone because for some reason, the piezo on this is super, super quiet for the rim. This drum set comes in four colors that I know of, black sparkle, an off-white cream color, a wood wrap, and I've also seen a dark chrome look every now and then. The cheapest place to buy it is directly from the company on Alibaba. It appears to be more expensive if you buy the same thing on AliExpress. You can also buy it here in the US from a site like eBay, but it's also gonna be more expensive there as well. Something you'll notice during the unboxing is that all the drums come with these barcodes pre-applied and they're kind of difficult to get off. So you're probably gonna have to use something like a uh, goof off or something, some sort of chemical to remove them completely from your drum. I didn't wanna do that because I don't own these drums, I'm just borrowing them. For hardware, this particular set came with a snare drum stand and three cymbal stands that have tom mounts. In addition, the standard setup would also come with a hi-hat stand and a kick drum pedal included in the box. I really like having ball mounts for the toms. It really helps you position everything exactly how you want in 3D space. Although something weird is that when I unboxed the high tom, I literally couldn't put the tom on the stand because the mount wouldn't unfreeze. So it left me scratching my head. I go to NAM. I come back, you know, some days later. And over that time period, the mount had opened by itself and I was then able to attach it to the stand. There was a second tom mount that was included on one of the stands. And I decided that because I wasn't using it for a tom too, because he substituted that out, I instead use that to mount uh, the module to one of these cymbal stands. So now that I've got the basic details out of the way, let's talk about the drums and like the overall pros and cons in three different categories. The cymbals are by far the best part of the drum set. They all work really, really well. You don't have to fight them in the settings. They kind of just work. And I love the sizing. I love the different, you know, profiles of everything. Having a China cymbal isn't necessary, but the fact that I can have a China cymbal sound assigned to a pad that vaguely looks like a real life China cymbal, I like that. Now, while I have experience with lemon cymbals, one of the new things to this drum set for me was the hi-hat. And thankfully, it's good. I like it. It triggers well, and even though it's a two-piece design, it's not overly loud and clompy like my 14-inch ATV hi-hats. While it only triggers three levels of open and closed with the lemon module, turns out that's just a module limitation, and it's not a limitation of the hi-hats themselves. On the TD30, it gives you that full range of open and closed, so it really depends on the module. I've already got two lemon cymbals on my personal drum set because I've reviewed their cymbals in the past. I've got the 18 inch one, and then I've got the 15 inch one. If you already have an electronic drum set that is compatible with these, this is a really quick, easy way to get large electronic cymbals, expand your drum set without having to spend too much money in the process. The only real criticisms I have is that the bell zone on the ride cymbal could be a little bit taller, um, then if you want to use this with a roll-on module, you're going to have to move an internal cable, possibly. No soldering involved. You just take off the, the back casing, you unplug a cable from one port, you plug it into the next one. I've done it multiple times. So yeah, overall, cymbals are awesome. They're the very best part of the drum set. They have rotation stoppers already pre-applied to the stands. They're awesome.
Now moving over to the drums, I wouldn't say these are as nice as the cymbals and they're not as well built as the cymbals. When you remove the mesh heads, you'll see that the snare and the floor tom, they share the same sort of trigger basket mechanism. I think some people call this a cake pan. So you have this plastic bowl type thing that clings to the rim. Your mesh head is actually resting on plastic, not the wooden shell itself. And then you got two piezos, one for head, one for rim, and then this foam tower design. Now moving to the high tom, it's actually using a different mount. It's using a three arm design. The kick drum trigger is different too. So it's using an internal side mounted design that is sort of reaching down from the top of the shell. And that's also where the input jack is. Now in general, I'm kind of against putting a kick drum trigger input jack right on top of the shell because I'd rather have the cable be closer to the floor, but uh, it doesn't really matter on this drum because the cable snake coming from the module isn't really long. So cable mess is gonna be there whether you like it or not. The trigger itself does have some foam there where your kick drum beater actually lands, and that's there to probably reduce a little bit of that rebound effect and uh, maybe make the triggering slightly better. But in my opinion, there's not enough foam there, and playing on this kick drum is super, super bouncy. So the first thing I would do is throw a bunch of blankets or a big pillow on the inside of this. That will help the kick drum be a little bit less bouncy, and it could also improve the triggering a bit. This also will stop the resonant head from ringing out because they don't have any foam backing on it like some companies do. Okay, so now let's talk about the negatives of these drums. Some are kind of minor and other parts are really serious. Starting off the less important stuff, the floor tom, I couldn't quite get it up high enough to match the height of my snare drum. The second thing is that the rubber rims that come in the box, they look great and they seem solid even after you played a day or two, but over a handful of weeks of use, there's a pretty high chance you're gonna tear right through at least the snare drum rubber rim. So if you're gonna buy this drum set, you're also gonna have to line up a aftermarket rubber rim to replace this one after you tear through it. And I didn't see this coming because, you know, they don't seem overly thin, but whatever rubber they're using just isn't very durable. This next thing is more of a cosmetic problem, but it's a red flag that should have told me something. So when I looked in the inside of the high tom, you can see that there are these splinters left over from them hastily drilling out this input jack for the tom. And again, this is just a cosmetic thing that you're not even going to see unless you take apart the drum. But if they're that hasty putting together the drum, that should have told me that maybe there are other elements of the drum they didn't really put together carefully. By far the most important problem I ran into is that three different piezos, three of them, moved on this drum set. Now, technically, it's not the piezo itself moving, it's the platform that it's attached to. And looking at the bottom of it, turns out that it's only held in place to these skinny plastic support structures with double-sided sticky foam. They're not using screws, they're not gluing it down, there is no permanent solution here to make sure that it never moves. The third piezo that moved was the rim piezo on the floor tom, which makes perfect sense now because you'll notice me saying in this video that I had to lower the threshold for the rim zone of that floor tom because it was such a weak signal. And that's probably because it wasn't in full contact with the bottom of the plastic. It just feels like this drum set was designed from the ground up to be as quick to assemble as humanly possible. And they just didn't really worry about making it durable. Basically, if you buy any of these drums, you're probably gonna have to make sure that you glue everything in place if you wanna make sure that they don't move. Okay, so next up, let's talk about the module, which has kind of been my nemesis the moment I set this up. But before I sort of talk about the things I don't like, here's a few positive things I was able to appreciate about it. Expandability on this is pretty good. I can handle everything here with no cable splitting, two crashes, hi-hat, ride, china, splash, two toms, kick snare, plus adding another tom as well. And of course, you can choose to have whatever sound be assigned to anything. I've actually got tom two plugged into this crash just because the cable length kind of matched. The next thing I like is that there are faders on the front of this, and for such a cheap module, that's great to see. And then the final thing that I really like is that you can change the MIDI note for every zone on every single drum and cymbal. Now let's talk about the negatives. I feel like the person who set up the trigger settings plays incredibly soft and they don't play very fast at all because the sensitivity on these drums is super, super high. If you play with any level of finesse, you're gonna have to back down the sensitivity or mess with the trigger curves. The second adjustment you're gonna have to make is lowering the re-trigger cancel because at least on some of these drums, if you play super fast, it will cut out some of those hits. And while we're talking about triggering, the trigger menu is super, super weird. The screen flashes when you play fast. No matter how hard or softly you're playing, just narrow slices of the screen go dim for a split second and then brighten back up. 
Why is this happening? I don't know. Rim shots are kind of hard to trigger on this for some reason until you lower down the threshold of the rim zone specifically, which is not a normal setting I usually see on snare drums, so that's kind of interesting. The next thing is that while I appreciate being able to change the MIDI note for every zone on every drum and cymbal, that's awesome. The downside is that sometimes that menu freezes on me. Another trigger menu problem is the lack of pad presets. They're baked into each input on the back of the module. So while I can use this Tom 2 cable for this crash, I do lose the ability to choke the symbol because the pad preset is baked into the module. I can make adjustments, but it's always assuming that I'm using each cable for its intended purpose. The sound quality, the dynamic range, all of that is pretty terrible on this module. I just wouldn't be able to bring myself to play with the built-in sounds of this for very long periods of time. Now you might think, who cares? We all knew the sounds wouldn't be good in the first place. We're just gonna buy this drum set and use it with a drum plugin like Easy Drummer 3 on the computer. And yes, you definitely can and you'll get better sounds this way. I did a demo already in this video, so you already heard this. But there's a big limitation here. The problem is with the hi-hats. For this particular module, it only sends out four MIDI notes for the entire hi-hat. You get open, half open, close, and splash. So on the one hand, there's no MIDI CC that software can grab onto for full expressiveness. You're limited to those three open and closed states. And then in addition, it's turned the hi-hat into a one zone pad. Say goodbye to a separate edge and bow zone, you get to choose one or the other. So as you rock back and forth on the hi-hat, you're only gonna hear one kind of sound. This robs all the nuance and expressiveness from your playing, and it's just plain weird. Also, the Lemon Z17 module doesn't use a MIDI map that lines up with any other drum manufacturer. Now, of course, no one says that you have to, but it does make your life easier when using this with software because it, I could choose the Alesis, Roland, Yamaha, Nuex, two box preset, and hopefully it would get 99% of the way there. With this one, I found myself having to go with like a generic preset that uses mini notes for hi-hat open and close, and then program the symbols until they matched up to what I needed. Also, this module's been a pain in the butt when it comes to trigger accuracy on the snare drum, and to a lesser extent on the kick drum as well, which is bouncy, so you have to really mess with the re-trigger cancel until it gets just right. I feel like I'm in a wrestling match, and it's just not really a great experience on the triggering end of things. Sometimes I feel like I've got it dialed in, other times I don't. And also, every once in a while I've had a weird audio lag with the built-in sounds, which sometimes goes away if I factory reset the module. Also, a quick side note here, the module doesn't come up as the Lemon Z17 under the MIDI devices on your computer when you plug it in. Instead, it comes up as the Lessi LD6. I thought maybe this was referring to some piece of hardware out there, so I googled it and no results came up. I'm not gonna ramble too much about this, just suffice to say that I have not had a good experience with either using the built-in sounds or using this inside of drum software. I just haven't had a good experience either way, so if I were to buy this drum set, I would just ignore the module completely and then go use a different module. Just go on eBay, buy something cheap and high quality and use that instead. Your overall experience will improve tenfold. Okay, so now let's move ahead and talk about recommendations and competition. Over the years, I've steadily gotten to play more and more of these uh, kind of like unknown electronic drum companies that most people don't talk about. All right, so when it comes to recommendations, this complete drum set, I can't really recommend to 99% of people. There may be some edge cases, but the fact of the matter is the module uh, gives me a headache and the drums, while initially I was kind of rooting for them, when sensors all move, like you just can't trust it anymore. So only buy them if you know that you're going to take them apart, glue everything in place, and then continue to play them with a different module than what comes with the set. And it's kind of telling also on the module front that the eBay seller for Lemon in the United States, that guy doesn't even sell the drums with the module. But I don't want to be overly negative about the brand because to be honest, I still recommend people buy the cymbal separately. That whole half of the drum set is great for the money. You can get a 15 inch China, you can get a nice splash cymbal for hardly any money, you can get the 18 inch ride cymbal for not much. There's all kinds of places to buy them. I have two of them on my drum set from previous reviews and they've held up over at least like a year or two of use. So durability seems to be there. It's almost baffling that the cymbals are so good and yet the drums are so not the same. So I don't even know how that happened over there. Okay, so now let's talk about the other competitors on Alibaba around this price and these sizes. The one that I would say is a really good alternative to this Lemon drum set is the HXM XD2000. 
This drum set is actually really good. It's sold in Europe as the Millennium MPS 1000, I believe. Uh, I'll do a whole separate video on this because I've talked to the designer of these drums and uh, I have some thoughts about it. But this is actually a good kit around the same price and you're gonna get a much better module. You're gonna get drums which hopefully don't have sensors that move around, so that's great. Just overall, this drum set is much more impressive to me. Once again, big shout out to the anonymous subscriber who let me borrow this drum set to make this video. Thanks for watching all the way to the end and I'll see you in the next video.